Uh, but without any further ado, Brendan, please uh, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Brendan Bloomer. Uh, I'm the CEO of Block One. Um, and it's great to see so many familiar faces, but perhaps even more exciting to see so many new faces. Um, Blockchain Live is over three times larger this year than it was last year. Uh, and I feel very fortunate to be part of such a rapidly growing community and to be in front seat of so much innovation. So over the course of the day, we're going to hear from many technicians, entrepreneurs, and academics at the forefront of blockchain innovation, all of whom look at this space from very different perspectives and with differing views on what blockchain is, represents, uh, and can be. Over the last year and a half, I've had the privilege to lead a very incredible team focused on delivering a high-performance protocol designed to be fast, free, and scalable, EOS. Through this process, I've been able to study the different value propositions and trade-offs that many different blockchains have to offer. And I've witnessed and been a part of many uh, debates relating to technical and structural nuances on how to optimally structure uh, a blockchain platform. I've spoken and argued over the definition of decentralization itself. And I realize that even though we're all in the business of consensus, it doesn't mean that we can always reach it amongst ourselves. And although blockchain is a new technology, it welcomes everyone with no prerequisites and is inevitably becoming a big part of all of our futures. I personally am not the most technical person in the world, but the industry has gotten to a point where I believe the technical debate is becoming a niche interest uh, that can often alienate the broader audience and the things that bring us all together, the things that we all have in common. Blockchain is simply a mutually agreed set of standardization of data storage and transmission. It's a set of constraints that developers agree to abide by in order to obtain security, security, auditability, and interoperability. Blockchain is to data, in some ways, what regulation is to society. Perhaps this is why superseding the technology itself, blockchain has become a movement a social and economic movement, and we're all united by the common understanding that this is revolutionary technology that offers promise of a more transparent, efficient, and interoperable world. A promise that large organizations are not only want run just on the behalf of shareholders, but run for the users themselves, safeguarding their privacy and driving values back to those that create it. A promise that large networks of anonymous collaboration may yield more grand and efficient outcomes that defy the limits of what we even understand as possible today. A promise that hidden adversaries may no longer hide through obfuscation, and transparency may usher in a new era of equality and accountability. And a promise that over time, at the very core of our society, our governments may even better represent all of us. As many are you Many of you are familiar with Bitcoin, designed originally as a digital store of value, is credited with elevating the potential of blockchain technology, and is perhaps the first neutral money that is issued in a very relatively fair and transparent way. It's digital, infinitely divisible, globally transferable, highly secure, finite, peer-to-peer -peer money that lends no bias to any government and can't be controlled by a central authority. We all know that today the world reserve currency is the US dollar, and the US dollar is printed and managed by an organization called the Federal Reserve. And through inflation, all holders are effectively taxed by one party. While this has proven to be a very successful model and will no doubt for a long time remain an integral and stable part of our society, Blockchain-based digital money offers the potential of neutral stores of value that offer no bias or advantage to any one party and seek to usher in a new era of borderless equality of value for different societies and nations throughout the world. As blockchains have become faster, uh, faster cheaper, and scalable, their applications are rapidly expanding beyond financial transactions. They're becoming a part of best practices for data transmission in general. Structurally, blockchains are enabling new community-driven business models capable of autonomously rewarding developers for code updates and users for value creation. 
we're beginning to see a future where technology platforms like Facebook, Uber, Airbnb, GitHub, insurance institutions, and even banking itself may exist with no central entity at all. Where the profits of such a network would be minimal to non-existent, and any excess value could be driven back to those that contribute to the prosperity of the network. The advent of blockchain-enabled tokenization has enabled projects to bootstrap initial funding requirements while simultaneously creating balanced economic ecosystems within the projects themselves. We're moving from an era of working around the constrained limitations of fiat currency to bringing the uh, currency into the product uh, design itself. In a social network that rewards users with tokens for content creation, and requires advertisers to purchase those tokens, an economic loop is closed and the value is driven back to the users opposed to traditional shareholders. Shareholders as we currently understand them are in many cases beginning to represent pricing inefficiencies and we may, it may yield them less competitive to projects with perfectly priced goods and services. All countries are different, but in today, but today, most, many of them require accredited investor status in order for individuals to take part in most financial opportunities. One example of accredited investor status is a net worth of at least one million USD, criteria that very few people are able to meet, which excludes most people on the basis that they are not even wealthy enough to participate. I will note that in most cases, those same individuals are able to participate without any limitation in state-run lotteries, casinos, and most forms of recreational gambling. However, tokenization offers a promise for consumers to store value in projects that they know and understand, projects they can actively engage in to drive their own personal prosperity. We all have friends that are quick to adopt the next cool thing, that clothing brand that is already that is widely uh, that isn't widely known, that they proudly display as a signature of their unique and original style. Rarely today can those early brand ambassadors become financially exposed to the products they create trem tremendous value for. But in a tokenized economy, the activity of early discovery and evangelism will be a career in itself. Although blockchain momentum has grown exponentially this year, we are still in the nascent stages of its development. And just as it was impossible to envision a generation built on social media the first time we sent an email, it's impossible to completely understand the radical potential of this new foundational technology. But we know it represents transformative progress. So while we move through the week and engage in healthy debate and collaborative competition, let this promise of progress keep us all reminded of the shared excitement of a better future that has brought us together in the first place, a blockchain future. So welcome everyone to Blockchain Live and let's make it a good one.